Hey guys, Judy here. Welcome to Digital Outlook. I'm so privileged today to be able to interview Billy Prifchowski from Caleb and Brown. And Billy's real special to David and I because he is our personal broker with Caleb and Brown. And so we're really blessed to have you here today, Billy. And I just want to welcome you to our channel and to our community. I know a lot of people have some written me questions and they're very excited to connect with Caleb and Brown um, in this manner. So welcome so much to our channel. Thank you so much, Judy. Thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure to be on. We've had the pleasure of working together for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. And and uh, we've been working with a, a lot of people from your community as well. It's been it's been great. A lot of people coming through. Um, you guys are building a really awesome community and, and we're happy to, you know, have an integration, be a part of it. So that's awesome. Yeah, we're, we're really excited too. We tell everyone about it, our family, our friends, our community. And I think sometimes they're just a little bit hesitant. They don't quite understand the need for Caleb and Brown and why we would use it. So um, we're going to go into that. I have a lot of questions, so I know you'll have a lot of answers for me. And um, for those of you who are avid investors, um, you're probably already signed up with Caleb and Brown, but stick around and maybe you'll learn something else. And for those of you that aren't quite sure why you would need Caleb and Brown, I'm hoping that today it'll bring a lot of clarity. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get started. So as I said, um, Caleb and Brown is personal for David and I because we are we use them. They are our brokers as well, especially Billy. He's per, our personal broker. And we wanted you to understand what is going on. So I'm just going to go ahead and start um, asking some questions. Um, Billy, on your website, I just want to read the first paragraph real quick. It says, we help our clients navigate the complexities of buying, selling, and swapping cryptocurrencies with 24-7 personal broker services. And so let's just start with what services exactly do you provide? Or yeah, let's start with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, we're, we're a full service brokerage. So think of us as, um, you know, pretty much exactly how you would engage uh, a stockbroker, except all we do is deal with crypto. So we're specialists in the field. Um, we're all very tenured and experienced in this space and traditional finance alike. Um, and so we we basically bring that traditional element into the crypto space, that personal element, something that we think is, you know, pretty much missing from the crypto space. It's never really been part of it. You know, crypto by design is very technological and it's all online and, and everything like that. And so, you know, the, the, the founders of our business thought that, hey, it would be a great idea that... You know, having someone to be able to pick up the phone and speak to with, you know, any questions that you have, any needs, any, any you know, expertise that you need uh, to fill that gap that, that, you know, is very much lost in the internet. The only place you can really look otherwise is, you know, on YouTube, channels like yourselves and, and, you know, Google things and whatnot. And as we know, there are so many scammers in this space as well. So, it's nice to have someone that you can speak to and, and, you know, be that voice of reason, whether that is to help you construct your portfolio, to help you um, execute the trades that you need done, to help you source the assets you're looking for and everything in between. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I know when David and I started, I'll ask this question later on, but I'll just touch on it now. The big question was, how do we know if we send it to him that the broker's just not going to take off with our XRP and we'll never hear from them again. And then when FTX and all these different exchanges started going down, it really brought a fear into the community, I believe. And so I've been trying to encourage people to let them know, yes, this is a legit organization. They will take care of you. It's wonderful to be able to get a hold of you. And one of my questions that um, some of my friends have asked is, well, if they're in Australia, when we're asleep, they're awake. When they're awake, we're asleep. If I wanted to make a trade and my broker's asleep, how do I let him know if crypto starts pumping and he's missing it? How do I let them know that I'm wanting to go ahead and, and take the trade or buy? Even? Yeah, yeah. Great question. Great question. I mean, it's it's funny. You've just, uh, all the memories are flooding back to my early days at Caleb and Brown when uh, we only had an Australian office. Uh, you know, we only had, a, a, you know, a, a modest size team. And, you know, in the past, the way, the way it worked is that I would start my mornings very, very early and I would finish my evenings very, very late to make sure that I was available to as many people for as many hours as possible. <laughs> um, 
And very quickly, that became a, a bit of an issue in terms <laughs> of scalability, because obviously, you know, you have we, to sleep I at some point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, despite what a lot of people think, I do, I do try and sleep as well. Uh, okay, <laughs> and so we were lucky enough. Um, I was lucky enough to have the opportunity uh, as part of the team that, you know, got to fly over to London and and open up uh, an office there. And so we've got a team that works 20, uh, 24 hours, uh, seven days a week. Uh, basically, we split the day in half between our Melbourne office and our London office. So we have brokers here, brokers there, traders here, traders there, support staff in either time zone, and basically creating a, a well-oiled machine that you don't need to worry about, you know, is my broker awake? That's okay. Send an email. If your broker's not awake, there'll be someone else on the other end of that email waiting to assist. And how long, what's the turnaround time? So if it's two in the morning, your time, and let's say it's five in the evening, my time, and I wanted to buy some XRP because it started to go down. And so I would just write you and say, hey, Billy, you know, hey, I want to buy, um, you know, $500 of XRP. Is there like a limit or is there how much can we buy or not buy? Is That's another issue I think that people have. But anyway, could I write you? I just would write you an email and say, hey, I'd like to buy X amount of XRP um, at um, 52 cents. So how would that work? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, basically clients have two options. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, we only operated via email. So, you know, send an email to your broker, request your trade, we'll get it done for you. Uh, like I said, it's 24 seven. So there's always someone behind those emails watching and waiting. Okay. Um, and so we, we get back to our clients very quickly. Um, since then, we've developed an online portal, which makes it a lot easier for clients to just jump in there, mm -hmm. request an order directly through the online portal. That usually, you know, cuts cuts down that processing time a little bit more. And so we can get trades through quicker. They get fed straight through to our, our trading team. All the brokerage team needs to do is just approve the trade and we're good to go. And so, yeah, in terms of limits, now we don't have any upper limits as a brokerage. We kind of specialize in those larger transactions, moving larger volumes at a time without moving the market, you know, being able to tap into different liquidity providers. That's kind of where we shine. Um, on that, on that note, we do have a lower limit. So our minimum trade size is $500. Okay. Um, so $500, if you want to uh, do it through the portal, if you want to send an email to your broker, we ask that you, you know, that the lower limit be $2,000 just because it takes a little bit more manual processing time to do that. Okay. That's good. So let me see. I just have so many questions. I know I'm going to be bouncing around a lot here. Um, so one of the questions as a brokerage I wanted to ask is, um, are you able to give financial advice? Like if I called and said, hey, should I? I want to branch out into um, Cardano. What, what are your thoughts on that? Like what's what are you able to do and not do in that scenario? Yeah, yeah. We get that question quite a bit. Um, so, you know, our team uh, is pretty much all qualified to give, you know, some semblance of advice or, you know, um, you know, have, you know, conversations around financial markets. The problem is, and the difficult part is that we're still navigating an industry that is, you know, largely unregulated, both here in Australia, um, you know, in the States and, and most places in the world, you know, crypto regulation is still in its infancy. So we're operating in an environment where cryptocurrency is still not really considered a financial product per se. So that kind of leaves us in a bit of a funny spot. It's like, you know, technically we can say this, that or the other, but, you know, maybe the regulators might have some issues with it. So instead, Caleb and Brown has kind of taken the approach that, you know, as, as brokers who work in this industry, who live and breathe crypto, um, you know, as a business that lives and breathe crypto, you know, we've, we've got a research team that is constantly staying, you know, up to date with what the latest trends are, what is going on in the space. We have a constant stream of news articles coming through to us. So we, we consider ourselves to be quite knowledgeable in this industry. So instead of providing financial advice, I mean, we're, uh, we're never going to tell our clients, hey, you need to buy this asset. You need to sell this asset. You need to sell at this price. You need to buy at this price. Right. Instead, we, we will encourage clients to come with us, come to us with questions uh, about specific assets, about the space at large. And we can discuss, uh, you know, whether Cardano is, is a great asset right now. 
What is what are the latest developments? What is happening in that space? What are its competitors? Um, you know, what what is the latest with the XRP lawsuit and, and what's going on there? So those are the kinds of conversations we can have. And we can have plenty of you know healthy discussions around you know how to best construct a well-rounded portfolio. What are the appropriate times to be accumulating assets versus you know looking to take some profit? And then you know whether it's an appropriate time to rebalance your portfolio. You know we can the the conversations are, are very broad that we can have. Mm. Um, just you know people should just be aware that. We're not going to be shoving ideas down your throat or telling you to do this, that, or the other with complete definite conviction. We'll try and give you as much information as we can to make you better investors. And I think that's the most appropriate way to do it in this space. Oh, that's great. That's really good, Billy. I like that a lot. So Billy, um, on your website, I saw that it talks something about you can do rapid trading. Can you explain what does rapid training, like if David and I wanted to do a rapid training, what would that look like or what does that mean? Right. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure exactly what the wording is on our website, but I think what the website is referring to is the fact that um, we offer a bit of a, think of it as opening a line of credit for our clients. Um, so what we can do in some scenarios um, is that, you know, if we have an existing client who has done a few trades with us before, maybe they're holding some assets with us. Um, we're comfortable enough to say, hey, Judy, you've sent over a wire. It might take a day for that to clear. It might take two days. We don't really know. It's up to the banking system. Mm -hmm. But if you send me a copy of the wire receipt, and that has everything we need to see to make sure that it's coming from the right person, it's coming to the correct account details, then what you can do is you can send me a copy of that receipt via email with your trade instructions. And basically what we can do is we can lock in a market order then and there with that wire receipt. Basically, basically using Caleb and Brown's company liquidity to fund that trade. And we can execute the order before your funds have cleared. So that's something we offer to give a little bit more flexibility, given that obviously the bank wiring system is a little bit inconsistent, can take some time. Um, and we know that the crypto market moves quickly. So uh, we wanted to give that flexibility. Oh, that's good. I really like that. Um, another question I have is it talks about direct transactions. It's kind of like bullet points on your website. And what I understood it to be is like you can take your from your Coinbase account, I can directly send it to Caleb and Brown, or I can take our ledger and directly send it to Caleb and Brown. So my question is for David and I is we prefer to have it on our ledger and send it to you just because when we were around for the last bull market, we saw that the exchanges went down, that we couldn't buy in. If we wanted to buy more, it said exchange down. And we're like, cents we want to buy. Or if it, if it shot up to, you know, $25, we want to get out. But if we have to wait for the transaction, have to wait, like, so can you give an example? Like, I know you can do both, but do you have like a preference like that you would suggest to our viewers to kind of help them in that, in that capacity? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think there's probably two questions in there. Um, mm -hmm. One of them is um, around, I guess, uh, market volatility and like times of high trading volume. Um, that's that's somewhere that Kelvin Brown sort of excels in in that area is the fact that you know as a brokerage we're not limited to a single uh, point of failure, as in a single uh, liquidity provider, which is where a lot of exchanges have issues where. You know, we saw on the day that, you know, the XRP lawsuit, um, you know, and the, the, the judgment came out that uh, I think it was uphold was down for like hours and hours and hours. And there was a bunch of other exchanges that were having issues. And the price now, was going up and everyone was probably panicked yeah. like, no. Yeah, <laughs> we've got panic buying, panic selling and people can't do anything. Um, but yeah, we, we don't really have that issue given the fact that you know, as a brokerage, we can tap into different liquidity pools. Um, and, and generally, we do that on a day to day basis mm -hmm. to find the best available price for any given asset at any given time. Now, that's especially important in times of volatility, because, you know, some of our liquidity providers uh, are not are not serviceable at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that we have options so that our clients are never locked out. So that's one huge benefit of Caleb Brown. I don't think we've ever had any downtime, at least in my my experience of being here for almost three years now. Right. Um, I, the other part of your question is around storage. And it's a really important question. I mean, we've seen 
over the past couple of years. I mean, you, where you choose to you store your crypto <laughs> is so important. We know this and mm-hmm. we're constantly reminded by the market and events that happen. And, and yet we tend to forget every, every couple of months, we tend to forget. Um, now there's, there's basically, Caleb and Brown wanted to have a level of assurance and safety for clients that, that chose to keep their assets with us. And hence why we have partnered with an institutional custody provider called Firebox, which basically is one of the biggest custody providers for crypto. And it allows us to keep all of our clients' assets in cold storage. So rather than having your coins exposed on a hot wallet or an exchange, uh, we keep everything in cold storage wallets. So that gives us um, you know, a great degree of confidence in holding client assets for them um, in the event that you know, clients choose to do that. And then the other side of the equation is um, you, know, you could just use your own cold storage wallet, which we very heavily support. And we think that if you're not going to use Caleb and Brown storage, you should definitely be using a cold wallet. Um, it concerns me when a lot of clients hold a bunch of assets on exchanges or or even hot wallets. I mean, hot wallets are still really popular. Yeah. Um, but we need to we need to you know take a step back and say, okay, if I'm holding X amount on a hot wallet, am I comfortable losing those assets? Because it is a very real possibility. Mm-hmm. It happens more often than not. And, you know, we don't want to be in a position where things need to happen, bad things need to ha- happen for us to be reminded of the diligence that needs to be taken. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree a lot. That's uh, one thing um, that I am trying to put out there with family and friends is to tell them, yeah, it's safe for now, but if the exchange goes down or you want to sell some, but that you're, you're a safe haven if, because I know the ledger, especially, um, for some of our, um, our senior clients that we have and and viewers, it's hard on the ledger to do it. And if the market's kind of crazy, um, you know, to look at the numbers, make sure you're doing it right. And so, um, I had suggested, you know, Hey, if, if that makes you nervous, then get it from your ledger and just send it to Caleb and Brown and let them hold it for you. Then you're just having to deal with, I want to sell or I want to buy, or you can give them some, you take, do you take money too? Like if we send you money, can you hold the money for us so that if XRP dips or, or we want to buy another asset, we can do that. Is that possible too? Yeah. Yeah. Clients can have a cash balance with us um, for as long as they need to. So, you know, sometimes that's easier than, waiting for the market to do something crazy and then having to pounce, um, you know, yeah. obviously, you know, and the last thing you want is for, you know, a big move to happen and you can't capitalize, whether that's because, you know, your bank has some issues or it's a weekend or something like that. So um, yeah, absolutely. Clients are more than welcome to okay. hold a cash balance with us, ready to go for whenever they need to. I like that a lot. That's good. Um, while we're kind of on that subject of, direct transactions. Can you just briefly explain, Billy, the the process of, I'm new, I would like to sign up for Caleb and Brown. I think I need them. This is something that I want to do. How difficult is it? Well, like, what do I do? Do I, I go to your website or what? Can you just kind of walk me through the ABC one, two, three? Like, how do you get my information? How do you know where to send my money? Or can you just mm-hmm. kind of go over that real quick? Yeah, I like to think the process is pretty easy. It, it's not all too different to you know basically any other crypto provider or, or um, financial services provider. So all you would do is go onto our website, click on the sign up link or use the digital outlook link, preferably. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you basically just put in your information. Uh, we request a few, you know, KYC identification documents to make sure we know who we're dealing with. Like your and- driver's mm-hmm. license or passport or some kind of documentation that you know i am yeah it's usually now, right? just okay. um it's usually just a form of photo id a proof of address document and then like a facial verification check so just to make sure everything matches up and so yeah once you're in uh our onboarding team will receive your application um usually they can get it done within 24 hours especially for individual accounts if you're trading as you know yourself um, if it's for, if you're signing up as a company or a trust or, you know, an LLC or a self-directed IRA, we can support many different account types. Those ones might just take a little bit longer because the documentation is usually a little bit more involved to take a look at. Um, but yeah, the process is super easy. You just need to submit everything that is requested. 
And then from there, once you're approved, you get assigned to your own personal broker and we'll reach out via email. You can request a phone call. Uh, it doesn't cost anything to open the account. Doesn't get doesn't cost anything to you know get on a call with your broker. And then from there, you can have a discussion around you know what your strategy might be, how you can best you know leverage Caleb and Brown in your uh, investment journey. And we can you know we're we're always happy to have those conversations. Oh, good. So if um, like I've heard of people like they thought they signed up, but they didn't hear back from Caleb and Brown. Was it because maybe they didn't fill out a step correctly? Or if there's someone out there that's listening going, I signed up for Caleb and Brown and no one ever contacted me. Do you know why that would happen? Or is there like a step missing maybe, right? Or something? Yeah, if, if there's an instance where someone hasn't been contacted, it's usually it's usually that uh, the application probably wasn't submitted properly. Um, okay. Because even if, uh, even if someone goes through the signup process and you know, does, you know, four out of six steps, for example, uh, our team will still reach out, our onboarding team will reach out and say, hey, we saw that you started your application. It's just missing X, Y, Z. Um, here's a link where you can pick up where you left off. So in all instances, okay. you'll always get some form of communication from our team unless the application hasn't gone through for whatever reason. And they can always call you. There's a number for them to call you or a number for them to be able to contact Caleb and Brown directly, right? And say, hey, I did an application and kind of flag it that something's up if they haven't heard from you, just so they know they have access to somebody, a live person, not just a portal to do. Is yeah, absolutely, right? absolutely. Okay, so we, we've got a support team that they can reach out really to. Good. There's a general number there um, and there's a, you know, a general inbox as well. So if anybody has any questions around onboarding or anything like that and they're stuck somewhere, they can just email support at calebandbrown.com and um, someone will get back to them pretty quickly. Oh, that's good. I That's really a great help because I know some people, you know, aren't always as computer savvy as others. There's a lot of young people in this space. So of course, they're, you know, wizards at it. And then there's, you know, more mature people that are struggling a little bit. So that's really great to know. And that's one thing I really like about you guys. We always have access to you, someone, and can talk to someone. And that's a big deal. Because sometimes um, when we were in Canada, we had uh, one exchange and we could never get a hold of anybody. And we're like, wait, our money didn't go through. Like, what happened? Like, you know, David's pretty good at stuff like that. So he knew he didn't make a mistake. But it was just real nerve wracking to be able to, you know, make a trade and not hear back. For a long time so that's oh, good absolutely i mean i mean even just from my personal experience of you know i've been you know dealing with you know my own personal investment journey in the crypto space for many 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 years mm -hmm. and so many issues i personally encountered over the years dealing with exchanges where something will eventually go wrong it's like yeah. a, you know it's like murphy's law right <laughs> is it yes uh, anything that can happen will happen right and, and at the wrong time when you're trying to buy or trying to sell, not just casually, absolutely. oh, I'm just going to throw some money at it today. I'm a dollar cost average. It's usually at a very pivotal time, probably that it happened. It did for us. So oh, it's always when you want to make a big move. And, and that's what's good about Caleb and Brown is that yeah. you never shut out from communication. You can always reach out and, and get in touch with someone. If your broker's asleep, there'll be someone else managing their inbox. They'll, there's always someone around that can be reached out to. And that's, you know, I think that level of assurance is really important in a space okay. like this, which is, you know, it can, you know, we, it can do really, really crazy things, you know, valuations can jump up and down and fluctuate, like, you know, uh, I can't think of a good analogy, but they can do crazy things. Well, we saw things. it last bull run, like you're just sitting there watching the portfolio go, choo, 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 and you're yeah. like, oh, <laughs> so it's <laughs> nice, yeah. Oh, no, and we'll get good. there again. We that's right we're again. more fingers crossed yes so um i have a bunch of questions um from some of our viewers i just wanted to get through this one note let's see um we talked about people may think that it would go down and so we'll talk we talked about the risk how you guys are secure um and we talked about how you keep it secure um and you're not going to run off with our money you guys are licensed and you're credited and everything that needs to be done and you're not going to go wild and, and just run off. Cause I think that's a lot of, there's going to be your hill, the questions, but that's just for future questions. You're just going to know there's a lot of anxiety in the space regarding that. Um, one thing I did yeah. want to ask is I have friends from around the world and they wanted, they've asked me, can I use Caleb and Brown? I live in India or I live in Rwanda. I live 
in different places. And I wanted to know who, who can use you. I mean, I know it's not just Americans and um, the Brits and Europeans, like who can Africans and Indians and people all over the world use you guys? Yeah, yeah. So we, we support um, a really, really large amount of countries in the world. I mean, there are, you know, some places that are on international sanction lists that unfortunately, you know, as a registered business in Australia, you know, uh, either our banking providers have issue working with or someone else has an issue with us dealing with, you know, particular regions. Um, that list is very, very small. Okay. So I would encourage anyone who is interested in working with us, go through the sign up, go through the registration. Um, I can't rattle off the top of my head which places aren't supported. Um, but it's a very, very minute portion of the world. Okay, good. And, you know, when they go through the sign up link, people will be able to select the country. So there's a very long list of countries there that are supported. Um, and like we said before, if your country isn't on that list of countries in the drop down box, reach out to us, email our support team and just ask the question. And, you know, if, if there's something we can do, we certainly will. I mean, we want to try and be available to as many people in as many parts of the world as possible. So okay. yeah, we're very flexible. Good. That's awesome. And unfortunately, um, New York is probably the only state in America that can't use, utilize your services. Is that correct? And you don't know any way for them to use anyone else or you can't, I'm just trying to help our New York viewers. We, you know, we love yeah. everybody in the family. We just want to have everyone join in and we just don't know how to help them. Do you have any suggestions for them? Look, my heart goes out to all of the um, crypto investors in New York. I know, it's, uh, I know. It, it's crazy. It's like, uh, you know, New York is the, you know, the big Apple, the big, uh, you know, I mean, I've never <laughs> been to New York personally, but as an Australian, New York is like the place, right? It is. And it's then, so fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, look, we we unfortunately don't have a bit license, which is what's required to operate in New York. Um, you know, I'm sure there's, you know, I'm sure there's a, you know, a, a decent number of exchanges that do have this license that people from New York can use. I'm sorry that it's not us. Hopefully, one day we can apply and, and get a bit license, and, and you know that'll be a thing of the past. But or they can just do away with the whole bit licensing law, and then you know we'll continue as usual. But for now, sorry guys, there's nothing I wish we can do. Good. Okay, I tried New Yorkers. I'm trying my best to help y'all, but okay. So um, I just want to throw in an extra thing here. Um, George Scott two four nine said, "I have no regrets." from using Caleb and Brown. And so I want you to know, you guys have a really awesome reputation and there are different people from our community that have used you and they've made note on our, our um, YouTube channel. And so I just wanted to give you a shout out. You guys are awesome. And there's, we're not the only family that thinks so. So that's good. So, Thank you, George Scott. Appreciate the support. Yes, yes. So um, Billy, basically I have some questions from our viewers. I did, um, I don't know. We do, you know, David does his coffee chat. And so I went over all the coffee cups because people wanted to know about it. And so then I told him, Hey, if you guys have any questions, I'm doing an interview with Billy, you know, right away. So send me questions. So I have a few questions. Now I have one um, viewer that gave like six or seven questions. So I kind of broke it down. And so um, the first question is from Mr. Andrew Dawson too. And um, it, the first question is, can you please, and you might've already answered this, but I want just to reiterate it to personalize it for this person, for Mr. Andrew Dawson. It says, um, can you please find out a question related to security of our assets? So I think you've covered that, but you are covered. We, you're on a secure line. You can send cash, you can send um, your crypto, you can have it custody there and it is safe no matter what. It's not gonna go down like FTX or, any of the other ones? Yeah, like I mean, we 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 like I said, in terms of our storage, we keep everything in cold storage. All all client assets are held in cold storage. So we explain not what cold storage is, assets. just for those few people maybe that yeah. don't know what cold storage means. Yeah. So I send you, I send you a thousand dollars or two thousand mm -hmm. dollars, whatever, or crypto, two thousand yeah. dollars worth of what what happens? Like what does that mean? Yeah, yep. Yeah. So basically, we have segregated wallets for each client account. Um, and most of them, a vast majority are administered by our uh, major custody solution, which is Fireblocks. So Fireblocks, for those who don't know, is like the biggest cold storage provider, you know, pretty much in the world. Um, they do custody for like 
the Bank of New York Mellon, for example. So, um, you know, they're, they're a big deal in the space. We're super happy with them so far. They've been really easy to work with. And that is something that Kaylin Brown is paying for entirely. So uh, people can store their assets with us with confidence and they're not going to be charged a cent for that storage. So, you know, that, that gives people a little bit more assurance. Um, again, like we said before, if people want to self-custody and withdraw their own asset, that's totally fine. We put no restrictions on what people can withdraw or, you know, things like that. I mean, you know, if, if a client would rather keep custody of their own assets, they can do so. We have a secure process of sending them those assets. So we'll always send a small test amount if it's a new wallet. Um, there's a, a two-factor authentication verification that needs to happen. And, you know, there are multiple layers of security in place. So um, security is something that we're very conscious of yeah. and we're very <laughs> curious about, as you couldn't probably could. Yeah, tell. that's very important. Exactly. Okay. Uh, Mr. Andrew Dawson, second question is, what if the government comes sniffing around? Do we have any protections like if the government of Australia or America or what other whatever country and they're coming around saying, hey, who's your client base or how much do they have? Is Are they able to do that? I don't know if that's what he means, but I'm I'm guessing. Yeah. I mean, look, it's uh there's there are always gonna be, you know, precautions and security measures in place. Um, there are policymakers and independent bodies that, you know, that govern things like um, you know, client confidentiality and things like that, and the protection of of, of data and, and things like that. So we haven't had any instances that I'm aware of where any government has come sniffing around for anything. Um, I guess, you know, if I'm completely honest, I mean, if there was some sort of federal or international investigation to, you know, a big, uh, you know, someone was, you know, happened to be financing terrorism or something like that, yeah. God forbid. Um, <laughs> yeah. Then we would probably comply if. Yeah, if that, I think if, so. <laughs> but, okay, you know, um, Again, in my experience, nothing like that's ever happened. Okay. And we'll just watch the laws and see how they change. If they allow self-custody, they take it away. What's happening? We'll have to have another interview for that for sure. Um, the third question he said is, can or will Caleb and Brown be required to do bail-ins for any reason? Meaning if you have our crypto and the banks start floundering, can they? Can Caleb and Brown go in and go, oh, Bob Smith has X amount. I, we can take that out of his account. I think that's what that question means. I think um, I, I, I don't really see anything like that happening. I mean, look, uh, you know, sometimes people will throw questions that, that yeah, we have no prior precedence for. So I can't exactly. really, I mean, you can't answer what we don't happens, know, right? <laughs> or what? Yeah, I mean, until something happens, I don't really know. But look, I mean, I don't really, we, we've always operated this business with the utmost integrity. Mm -hmm. We've always put in clients first. So um, yeah, you're going to protect I guess, us, right? You're going to protect us as much as possible. And that we'll leads me to the next, we can. yeah. And my next yeah. question, it leads to that. He says, um, yeah. are Caleb and Brown required to hand over our assets or passwords if required? Well, no, we've never been required to hand over any, any mm -hmm. bit of client information to, okay. to anyone that I can at least think of off the top of my head. Um, I, I, I just wanted to add as well, you reminded me of something, Judy, about, you know, when it comes to things happening in the space that are, you know, extraneous to Caleb and Brown, we're always going to do our best, you know, as a, as a client's first business, we're always going to do our best to keep our clients informed of things and try and make people aware of things before they happen. Okay. Uh, I'll give you two examples. Mm -hmm. uh, when FTX was about to collapse, we caught wind of the whispers and the rumors that something was rumbling. And we let all of our clients know, especially those that were holding like the FTX token, uh, we made sure that everyone was aware that something was going on in the space and they needed to protect themselves. Um, and another example is, and, and this was, you know, before the collapse, not after. Yeah. <laughs> um, and another example is, you know, when uh, when USDC depegged, um, and you guys would have remembered that we sent out a big, um, you know, mm -hmm. client-wide, company-wide communication to everyone. Uh, and we, we kept trading, we kept giving people an avenue to be able to trade their USDC, Nobody knew what was going to happen. Um, we try and always be ahead of the curve and okay. try and help where other exchanges will neglect to help. So <laughs> I know that a lot of exchanges were, 
you know, uh, stripping their support of USDC at the time, we kept trading, we kept allowing clients, you know, that potential to move in and out of the asset. So we're always going to do that. We're always going to put our clients first. Oh, I love that. And we appreciate when you give us a heads up because it's hard to know everything and you have a, a team and a whole organization that does that. I really appreciate that. Um, another question that Mr. Andrew Dawson too says is, is it best for us to have two wallets and only hand over our smaller amount we are wanting to trade with? Again, I think it all comes down to personal preference, right? I mean, I've got a lot of clients, some prefer to you know, keep all their assets with us. Others prefer to keep them all in cold in their own hardware wallets. Um, and others like to do a mix of both. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's just, it, it all comes down to whatever works best for the client. Okay, good. Um, and then another question, sorry, he had a lot of questions, but they're good questions. So why not? Right. Um, what sort of insurance or safety net is our investment held by them? And I think you've been over that. Um, yeah, yeah. So Firebox has their own insurance mm -hmm. uh, for the assets that are that are held in their wallets. Um, I think there is some information on their website about that. But um, yeah, I mean, look, as a as a you know custody <laughs> provider, I think Firebox has been around since 2018, and they've never had a single compromise. So okay, we're good. pretty um, yeah, we're we're pretty um, comfortable with them. Oh, good. And then the last question, Mr. Andrew Dawson too said is, what guarantee do we have that some crook won't end up with our password in crypto? Thanks so much. <laughs> yeah, that's um, that's another reason why I, I, I keep harping on about Fireblocks, but they they are great. Yeah. Um, so they they use um, they use multi party computation when it comes to you know the signing of transactions and things like that, okay. um, and they require multiple signatories when things need to happen in terms of the movement of crypto, which is really good because it means that uh, we've safeguarded from the capacity of anyone any one person or any multiple people being able to go rogue and basically drain assets from either our business or client accounts or anything like yeah. that. So basically, you need a multitude of people to sign off on things before they occur. Unfortunately, that, that means there's a little bit more uh, bureaucracy and, uh, you know, sometimes withdrawing assets won't happen, you know, within mm -hmm. a minute like they can on some exchanges. But it means that we have a level of security in place that we're comfortable that things are happening quick enough and, and security is not being compromised for it. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much. So, um um, Mr. Anderson Dawson or Andrew Dawson too. I hope we answered all your questions and you felt satisfied with that. Um, I have another question from Kathleen Bell, one, three, five, six. She said, would you be able to find out how much crypto you have to own to register with Caleb and Brown? Thank you. And you have a great day. Take care. Yeah. Um, again, our minimum uh, uh, trade size per asset is five hundred dollars, or five hundred in the currency of your region that we support. I think we have about uh, you know five or six different um, fiat currencies that we can support. Um, you don't have to have a single cent in crypto to open an account with us. You don't have to have a balance in your account to have an account with us. Mm -hmm. That's the great thing. I mean, you know, for those who. Uh, may not see the immediate value in working with Caleb and Brown. I always encourage people to sign up, open the account, have it there as a fail safe so that if something happens or if the time comes that you think you might need it, you can then jump in, have a chat with your broker and start using us. Um, again, you don't need to keep any assets with us. You don't need to own a specific amount. Uh, we're comfortable to you know, work with you. As long as you can meet that transactional minimum, that's totally fine. And I really want to harp on that point, Billy, because right now the market is not pumping like we know it's going to, or what we believe and hope and pray it's going to. And it is important that we do preventative first. And so I really want to encourage all of our viewers um, out there to please sign up with Caleb and Brown so that you're ready. And if you need them, great. If you don't, no harm, no foul, but just sign up now while there's calm before the storm. You don't want to do it right when everyone's panicked and they're trying to sell and they're doing this and that. Not that they can't handle it, but it's just, it's your peace of mind because you might not want to wait 24 hours for them to get back to you. You might not, you, you want to act immediately. So if it costs nothing and it it's free basically to sign up, I would really encourage you guys to sign up. That's a very important point. Um, another of our uh, subscribers are 
viewer says, um, it's Sir Photograph 9847 says, my question for Caleb and Brown would be if there are any daily limits on buy or sell. No, we have absolutely no limits. Okay, good. Also, um, Sir Photograph wants to know how they structure fees on sales. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, you know, through the digital outlook link, the um the the fee for transacting for the, the brokerage fee for buy orders, sell orders, and swaps directly between any assets we support uh, is three point five percent. That's all inclusive. There's no additional costs. Doesn't cost anything to store assets, withdraw, deposit, anything like that. Um, now our fee structure has always been uh, opting for transparency over anything else. Whereas you know most exchanges will you know advertise like a super low fee, which <laughs> you know once you've done the transaction is usually for some reason more expensive than us in a lot of cases, especially yes. when you're talking about those larger orders. Mm -hmm. And that's because they skim money by, you know, charging on the spread, um, there's slippage, um, you know, there's a price premium if you're buying, a discount for selling, things like that. So There's hidden fees uh, in there. And that's what I try to tell people too, is I know you may be capable of getting it off of Coinbase yourself if it's not down, but there's always those little secret things. And as the pump happens, they're going to get their money. It's not just, it's not free. No matter what trade you do, whether you're swapping, you're trading, you're always paying a fee with exchanges. It's not free. So why not use someone Absolutely. you can trust and you have direct access to to call? So that's good. Absolutely. I mean, oh, I always encourage people to um, to think about the fact that, you know, if if an if a organization is, you know, claiming that they're charging so little, I always challenge them to think about how are they actually uh, able to operate a business? So they're either doing one of two things. So they're either taking fees where you don't see them mm -hmm. or they're doing what FTX did and that they're trading with your assets. So, <laughs> um, you know, these businesses are huge. They have big overheads and they need to pay their mm -hmm. staff. They need to pay the rent. Um, and this is something that a lot of people don't think about. Yes. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that Caleb and Brown is cheaper than every exchange in the world when you're trading $10, $50, you know, $100. Yeah. And that's why we don't do trades of that size, because we know that, that a lot of exchanges can do those amounts for cheaper. There is a cost to the human labor that goes into it. Um, but, you know, once you start hitting our minimums, um, people will see the value in working with us. Just direct access to you, Billy, makes the world a difference for David and I. And the last question that Sir Photograph uh, 9847 has is, can sales go directly to bank accounts or USD coin? Thanks, Tom. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we can, we can withdraw funds uh, to a bank account held in the name of the account holder with us. That's not a problem. Uh, we wire funds every day to the States and everywhere else. And uh, yeah, and, and we can trade into USDC or any other stable coin that we support. The good thing about Caleb Brown is that we have direct pairings with any assets that we trade. So, you know, whether someone wants to sell into USDC, USDT, uh, DAI, uh, whether they want to trade their XRP into Bitcoin or their Ethereum into Cardano, we can do all oh, nice. of those trades. Oh, good. That's wonderful. Um this is, let's see. So we talked about if you're in Australia, how do we contact you? Um, we know how to do that now. Um, do you provide any tax documentation or any documentation? Like if we do a trade, do we get a piece of paper from you or for our taxes or does, do we have anything like that that we get from you? Yeah. Yeah. So we don't do any um, sort of region specific tax documents per se, but you know, you can go on our portal, you can download a transactional summary at any time um, that can be used for reporting. Um, and every time you do a trade with us, you get an invoice, which basically uh, details the results of the trade. So what you bought, what you sold, what the price was, what the fees were, it gives you a full breakdown of everything. Mm -hmm. And I just want to reiterate that if I sent you $500 and I said, I want to buy um, XRP at 52 cents um, because it's, it's going down. And so when you get it, do you guarantee the price um, that if it hits 52, that it'll go out at 52? Because I know when we tried to, when the lawsuit came out and XRP started going down, we were trying to get in, trying to get in and we couldn't. And so we mm -hmm. didn't get the price that we were hoping for, you know, because then it turned around and started going back up. And so, 
do you guarantee it? Or like if it was a sell order, let's say we went to sell it $9 and 58 cents because that's yep. good or $10 or whatever. Do you guarantee it at $10? If it hasn't passed it yet, you know, obviously, but I'm saying if it's at $8 and I send it to you and say, Billy, I need, I want to sell um, 25% at 10, at $10. Well, mm -hmm. is that possible? Yeah. Yeah. So as long as, as long as the price is achieved through our liquidity pools and, and usually um, there's a better chance of your price being achieved in our liquidity pools than on a single exchange because we have access to multiple places. Um, then absolutely, is if that price is achieved and at the volume uh, that the that the order is, it's always going to be filled. Um, so yeah, not too concerned about like limit orders and things like that. I mean, we've had a lot of success over the years where you know you see sharp drops, you see sharp spikes. Um, you know where. We're very comfortable at having, you know, proficient execution strategies for when the, these moments happen. Um, it, quite often, we'll see that on, you know, one exchange a certain price has been hit, but on another exchange it hasn't. Um, you know, people need to treat those, uh, you know, data uh, places with a little bit of uh, dubiousness because, you know, if 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 one exchange has really low liquidity and price is moving really like volatile, it doesn't mean that if you had a thousand dollar order that it would have been executed at that price. It may mean that it was only one person trading ten dollars at that point, but it happened to go there. But um, yeah, okay. look, in um, <laughs> we're very comfortable with market orders. We're very comfortable okay. with limit orders. We call them target orders. Um, it's a big advantage having a business that can access such a large amount of liquidity because it means that you're pretty assured that if your order executes, it will execute. Oh, that's good. And I have a, a random question. Um, it, I, I wrote down, it was from me. It's not from one of our viewers. I said, what happens if the grid goes down or we have a power outage and we have a buy and sell order? Because, you know, right now we're having a huge, you're in your winter, but we're having a huge heat wave here, especially in Texas. So, um, and sometimes the power goes on and off. And I know that crypto constantly sells or XRP, especially it constantly is on the move. It doesn't need electricity, I guess it's satellite. Or I don't know how it works, but anyway, um, can we still buy or sell? So like if I had sent over um, some money to you and said, hey, Billy, when it hits a certain spot, I want to, I'd like to sell. And then our power goes out. So you might not be able to transfer the money. You got the order. You can't transfer it to, you know, our bank. Would you just hold it for us? Or how does that work? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if the power goes out here, we've got plenty of <laughs> contingency plans in place. Um, you know, we've got backup generators and things like that. So we're not too concerned. Um, obviously, um, if if orders have been placed ahead of time um, and the price is achieved, they will be executed. Um, and then we can always wait. I mean, we know that people get in tough situations. So we're always like comfortable and happy to work with people in whatever way we can. So whether that is, okay, uh, okay Judy's power went out. We need to hold some funds for her until I can get in touch and figure out, you know, where we left off in communication. That's totally fine. I mean, um, that's another benefit of having that human mm -hmm. relationship with your broker is that, you know, we, we, we come to expect certain patterns of behavior and certain, um, you know, conversations. And if something is a bit funny or we're, we're not quite sure about something, we'll always do our best to reach out and, you know, try and get in touch with our clients to make oh, sure good. that we understand where they're at, what they're doing and how we can best help out. Oh, I love that. Thank you. And I um just wanted to touch on this because we already did, but they asked this question. I want to get to it. Um, Ludovic4903 had a question. They said, do you have any suggestions on what stable coins are the safest, most reliable to redeploy equity from XRP? Now, would that be a question that a client would be able to ask you and you could have a discussion? I don't expect you to answer it right now because I want him to sign up and, and go to your go to Caleb and Brown. But is that a question you'd be able to discuss with him or her? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, look, at the end of the day, um, there is in the investment space, there is always inherent risk in everything. Mm -hmm. um, there's risk in holding dollars. There's risk in holding crypto. There's mm -hmm. risk in where you store it. Um, there's risk oh, yeah. in everything. Um, so, you know, our, my answer to a question like that would be, okay, how do we analyze the facts that we have and balance out that risk. And the way I would answer it is I'd say, 
okay, we saw what happened with USDC. They were saved, but they're heavily centralized. So you have security and centralization, but also concern there as well. Then you've got USDT, which is a lot more whimsical in how it's actually backed and things like that. But it's had far less problems than any other um, sort of stable coin that has existed so far. So we do see a relative stability there. Um, the third option is you can always hold your funds in US dollars with us. So if people have concerns with stable coins, um, unless they need to withdraw them to a, to a wallet or some, something like that, you can always hold your funds in USD rather than a stable coin equivalent. So we have that flexibility of being able to move from USD into assets and vice versa. So people don't need to worry too much about stable coins. That's good. So I hope uh, Ludovic4903, you got your question answered. So I have just a few more things just to ask you before we go. I really appreciate your just being so informative, Billy. And if I hadn't signed up, I'd sign up again. <laughs> Because it's just really answering a lot of questions that I think a lot of people have and they're hesitant to jump in and sign up. And there's really no reason, you know, harm, no, no harm, no foul, jump in and just do it. But I want to talk to all my skeptics out there who are part of our viewership and um, just give me one or two lines, how you would answer this. Um, so these are for my skeptics out there. You know who you are. Um, I already know how I already know what my exit strategy is. I don't need I don't need Caleb and Brown. What would mm -hmm. you say to someone like that? Oh, look, that's totally fine. I mean, I, you know, I'm of the opinion that not everyone needs to use Caleb and Brown. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, there are services out there for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes it's nice to I like to encourage people as well is sometimes it's nice to have another person in your life that you can pick up the phone and speak with every now and again. Mm -hmm about your exit strategy, about your investments, about what your plans might be. Quite often I find that, and even for myself, it's very easy to get caught in an echo chamber when it comes to your own investments, mm -hmm. whether that's, you know, your friends or, you know, the people you follow on Twitter or what have you. Yep. It's sometimes it's always nice to be like, hey, I just want to have this conversation with you. Tell me if I'm crazy or whether you think this sounds reasonable. Mm -hmm. And that is, I think, you know, something that people should consider. That is, that's good. And to balance out your portfolio or whatever they may have. Um, someone saying, I never had a problem getting my crypto off an exchange. I'm thinking you well, have been fantastic. in a bull run then. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's what I'm say. You haven't been in a bull run or when it really plummeted and you got to the price you wanted. I don't know. What would you say? Again, it's like, um, it's like what we said before about Murphy's Law. It's like, you know, it will happen eventually. I oh, mean, yeah. those of us who have been around long enough um, I don't know. I personally don't know anyone. I don't know anyone at Caleb and Brown that hasn't had trouble with an exchange. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, you. there are limits on exchanges. There are limits. Um, so hopefully um, to this uh, viewer, hopefully their portfolio gets to a point one day where um, it'll be a good thing when the exchange doesn't let you withdraw all your assets because you've made it that rich. Yes, that's right. Um, another one is, um, I don't need Caleb Brown, or I don't think I should use them because I don't own enough crypto to use a broker. What would you say to that person? Yeah. We have a lot of people who own anywhere from 1000 to 5000 to 10,000. And they just think, Oh, I'm not a big boy. I'm not a big girl. I'm not in the playing. You know, I'm not in that field. What would you say to mm -hmm. those people? Yeah, I would say that, look, if if your um, if your portfolio and your your current investments are not big enough to meet our minimums, but you think that you might find value in working with us one day, again, I would encourage you to open an account, um, you know, let your broker know, shoot them a friendly email and say, hey, I'm pretty small in the space right now, but I'm hoping that, you know, the value of my portfolio will get to a point where I can start trading with you guys in the future. And that way you've got everything ready. You're not scrambling at the last minute when your portfolio has done a 5x, 10x at the peak of the bull market, mm -hmm. you know, get your ducks in a row, get everything sorted. Uh, you don't need to do anything with us right away. But yeah, it's always good to be prepared. Mm -hmm. And I think don't despise small beginnings. You might have a little now, but if the price takes off, you don't have a little bit anymore. You have a lot and you can deal with you guys and work with you. And I think that's something sometimes we have a small mentality thinking, oh, I don't own very much. It's like, you might not need to once this bull market goes. So plan ahead and be positive and, and think to the future. Um, 
and I think we touched on this already um, for our skeptics. Um, I don't want to pay a fee to cash out my crypto. And I think we kind of touched on that, that there's always fees and hidden or not, and you're going to pay one way or the other. So I guess there are fees everywhere. Exactly. Fees are Nothing's free. Your bank isn't even everywhere. free. <laughs> you can't Nothing's, even go to the ATM. Uh, kind of just this point. What's that saying? It's like, what are the two, what are the two guarantees in life? Death, Death and, and tax. taxes. <laughs> yeah. And That's fees. Right. That's right. Well, do you have anything else to add or, or, or say, Billy, because this has been just really, really amazing. And I feel like I even personally know and understand more about your service. I mean, David's, you know, the brainiac in the family and he, he knows how to do all that. But I really um, feel like as just the plain Jane, just understand a lot more about what your services do and how to, how to do it. Um, oh, I do have one. So David and I, let's say for the couple, David and I are married, obviously. Um, does one of us need an account? Do we both need an account? How does that work? Like, do do we both need it? Or can just one of us have it? Or how, what do you suggest or say on that topic? Yeah, it, it just all depends on sort of how your finances are structured. I mean, um, you know, obviously some couples like to keep everything segregated. Others are happy to intermingle their funds, commingle, what have you. Um, we don't offer joint accounts, but what people can do is... You know, if one person, like if one, uh, you know, part of the relationship wants to sign up, um, the husband wants to create an account, and then the the wife can sign up as well, or, or whoever it is, and be listed as an authorized agent on the account. And that way, they can both send requests. Um, that's totally fine. So people can do things like that. Um, the only thing with us is, um, you know, when it comes to funding your account or taking funds out of your account in terms of cash. Um, we need to make sure that the person listed on the account is the person that is sending money. So, you know, if, if it was, if, if David was the account holder and Judy was sending money from a bank account held in her name only, uh -huh. we wouldn't be able to accept those funds. Mm -hmm. But if it was coming from a joint bank account held in both the name of David and Judy, that would be absolutely fine. Good. So if I wanted to cash out some of David's crypto and I was an authorized user, I could. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> I won't do it. Just, Billy's like, I know where to find you. You're not still in that <laughs> monkey business, Judy. <laughs> I just had to ask. It was funny. But well, Billy, was, thank it, you. It, yeah. you gotta <laughs> you, you gotta consider all your uh, all your angles, Judy. You gotta Yeah, that's right. That's right. I gotta work this. No, but thank you, Billy, so much. It's just been such a pleasure to have you on our program. And um, if any of you guys are doubting about Caleb and Brown, don't I think you'll be very happily um, surprised and blessed down the road. And don't despise your small beginnings. And I just want to encourage you to go for it. Sign up with Caleb and Brown. Um, we're going to have a link below um, that is a dig. It's a link. Explain that how the digital outlook link works. Like we'll have it down below or let them know that yeah, we yeah. referred you or something. So, yeah, yeah. So there's a link. Uh, there'll be a link that you can sign up through digital outlook. Um, that way we know where you're coming from. We know that, you know, 3.5% is the maximum you'll ever be charged. And we'll look, we'll look after you. You'll, you'll, you'll be taken good care of by our team. Uh, we've got a great relationship with um, Judy and David and the team. So uh, we, we want to make sure that we extend that great service to everyone that is a part of that community. Yeah, we want our people to be the VIPs just like, you know, our community is. And we want to bring them along. That's David's motto is. We want to bring you along with us. And so we consider all of you who are watching this part of our family. And so please let them know we've sent it and you're part of us and you'll get, you'll be taken care of. I can guarantee you that. So, well, Billy, I just wish you a blessed, I guess it's a day for you. We're getting ready to go to bed over here but in Australia. Thank you so much. You were so informative and you were just great letting me just bombard you with all of my million and one questions tonight. No, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me on, Judy. Um, looking forward to welcoming more of the Digital Outlook community and looking forward to continuing to work closely with you guys. And yeah, if anybody has any questions or anything, um, again, uh, feel free to sign up, uh, talk to one of our brokers, talk to our support team. We're always happy to help. And uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing some new uh, new folks from the Digital Outlook community come through. Yes, us too. Well, thank you so much, Billy. You take care. Bye-bye now.